I'm really, really excited about sharing this message, I'm taking a little jump out of our master plan series. I feel like God has a word for us today that's going to bring healing and encouragement into your heart. I'm going to read 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 in a moment, but I'm calling this message today the gate of thanksgiving. There's an access that we need to the presence of God. I want to talk about the gate of thanksgiving, some fresh revelation on some things. What, what are we going to learn today? How we turn earth's hardest moments into heaven's highest praise. How many want to take earth's hardest moment and turn it into highest praise? What we're going to learn today is what to do when we don't know what to do. Anybody ever been in that place in your faith, honestly? Have you ever been at a place where you say, I don't know what to do now? Have you ever been in a place where you don't have an answer? You're, you're saying, God, what's going on? Anybody ever been in that place? Tell the truth. Have you ever said, God, I don't understand? Anybody ever been in that place? Everybody ever asked, God, why? We're going to work on some things today. What to do when you don't know what to do? How, how do we bring God's presence into the present? We have a lot of past tense. God was good then. I know someday he, but let's talk about today, all right? How do we bring his presence into the present? Let me, let me say this. Your walk of faith and some of the challenges you've been through, You've paid much too high a price for life or Satan to steal this opportunity that we're going to have today, okay? You've paid much too high a price to miss what you're going to miss. So I want you to say, I want you to say that out loud today. Say, today it changes. I want you to build your faith. Say it again. Today it changes. Okay. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Uh, I kind of love this. Somebody told me, Pastor, this is how you text. That's why I love text. Just get to it. You understand? Just get to the moment. So this is kind of like the Holy Spirit texting. Look at this. Verse, verse 16. Be joyful always. That's enough. No more. Look at the next verse. Pray continually. Don't you love people to just get to it? Uh, this is Holy Spirit texting in my opinion right here. Okay. But then look at verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks, not for everything that happens, but in everything that's happening. Why, why, in all circumstances, this is God's will for you, all right? So, so giving thanks, I want you to get this, is transformational. When we begin to understand what thanks does strategically in our life, it will become one of the greatest weapons you have in spiritual warfare. I'm convinced there are a lot of battles that could be won if we understand how to utilize the weapon, the strategy of giving thanks. We, we, we see here that it's in all circumstances. There's something there I really want to mine out, unpack and open up today that I'm not sure that, that we've really understood. I'm learning that when we wrap thanksgiving around our prayers, okay, when I'm praying, when I wrap thanksgiving around my prayers, something powerful is released. When I wrap thanksgiving around my prayers, God is given space to go to work in my life. How many want to see that happen? All right, you want to create space for God. Giving thanks is remembering who God is. Remembering who God is and being reminded of what he has done. Okay, We talked about this a little bit Wednesday night. When you begin to give thanks, let me tell you, for everything God has done, when you pause and remember, reflect, meditate, think about all that God has done, all that he is and all that he's done, listen to me, you're building a faith account in your life. You're going to draw on that someday. We're going to draw on it today. Did you hear what I said? When you stop and remember and reflect and thank God for what he's already done, you're building a faith account in your life. Look at Psalm 77. I want to show you this a couple of places, then we're going to get into this gate. Psalm 77, 1 and 2. I, 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 look at this. Uh, David said, and this psalmist says, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. Verse 2. He, he's, in, he's, he's struggling. And he says this. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night I stretched out untiring hands and I would not be comforted. Have you ever had one of those nights where nothing was working for you and you're crying out to God and you're saying, you're walking the floor, I can't go to sleep, I've got too much I'm dealing with, God, I'm in distress. Anybody ever had a moment like that? Can you be honest with you? You ever dealt with one of those moments? Well, watch this. What do you do? Drop down to verse number 10. 
And, and, and let's see what happens in, in this setting. Verse 10, in this same chapter, we, we begin to find this begins to be spoken. So he says, I cried out to God for help. I, I wanted him to hear me. I was in distress. I was at night. I was praying. And then verse 10, he says, then I thought, to this I will appeal. Okay? This is Psalm 77, 10. Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years of the right hand of the Most High. Remember, look at this, verse 11. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Anybody with me right now? What do you do when you're walking the floor at night, when you're crying out to God, when you're trying to find an answer? Here's what I would recommend. Everybody with me? I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. God answered any prayers in this room? God given any miracles in this room? That's what you need to think of when you're walking the floor at night. That's what you need to do when it's not making sense. He says, I will meditate on all your works. And consider all your mighty deeds. Verse 13. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? Come on, do you do that? Look at this. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people with your mighty arm. You redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When you're walking through the struggle, remember the faithfulness of God. Begin to call on that. What are you doing? You're building a faith account. Someday you're going to need to withdraw that. You're going to need to come on that. So, so we're looking at this, but, but, but let's get to the understanding of the gate of Thanksgiving because this is what I want us to understand. What is the gate of Thanksgiving? Look at Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5. Psalm 100 and, and, and verses 4 and 5. What do we read here? Very familiar. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter his, his what? His gate, we're talking about the gate of thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. There is a gate named thanksgiving. A gate is a point of access. A gate is something that allows, watch this, people to come and go from both directions. A gate is access. And we're, we, we see here that this gate that we need to understand more than one day a year when we have turkey to eat, more than one Sunday a year when we're the Sunday before, we need to have the revelation. What is the gate of Thanksgiving? How does this operate in my life? Let's look at another, another uh, verse. Isaiah 60 verse 18. Isaiah 60 and verse 18. I'm just wanting you to see this concept. It, it, it's here. Look, no longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. Watch this. But you will call your walls salvation. There's a word gate again. And your gate praise. So scripture, we're seeing this pattern that there is a point of access into the presence of God delineated as a gate, the gate of thanksgiving, the gate of praise. Salvation is what God does. Can you say amen to that? No one can save us but God. But praise and thanksgiving is how we respond to God. So salvation is God's work and praise is my work. How many heard what I just said? Salvation is who God is and what he does, but thanking him for that becomes my response and my responsibility. Now, let me show you one more thing in Revelation 21, 21, and then we're going to apply this. You see this gate, this point of access, this, this coming and going. And, and, and I get this, uh, an incredible revelation on this gate from Bill Johnson. Look at verse here in Revelation 21, 21. We're looking at heaven, okay, accessing the presence of God. The 12 gates were 12 pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. Can you imagine? Size of that pearl? These are the gates into the new Jerusalem, the heavenly city. Each gate a pearl. The great street of the city was of gold as pure as transparent glass. All right. So, so this gate, we want to understand, is a gate of thanksgiving. It's a gate of praise. It's constructed and built by my thanks and praise to God. But we see this gate is a pearl. It's represented by a pearl. How many of you understand how pearls are developed. How does a pearl develop inside an oyster? What causes it to begin to develop? 
sand. Irritation. Irritation is how a pearl begins to develop inside of an oyster. Do you see these incredible gates of praise, these gates of thanksgiving? I want to help you today. They, th this access to the presence of God are built by the way we respond to difficulty. These access, this gate that opens the presence of God to me literally begins to be formed in my life as I respond to the difficult times in life. If I'm going to access and come into the presence of God, if I'm going to see, thank Him in all circumstances, why did the Bible say that? Why is that so important? Because it's in those adverse circumstances that I respond appropriately and I draw on my faith account and say, God, you are faithful that a gate begins to open that allows me in the middle of the worst moment of my life to access the presence of God. You see, anyone can praise God in the good times. You know, when Alabama and Auburn are both winning, it's a good day. Today's a good day. You boys whipped up on little sisters yesterday, and you're feeling good, and the Bama fans got that chest out. We don't need to. Uh, we can whip anybody that comes to Tuscaloosa. And Auburn fans strutting around like a rooster. We got a freshman quarterback. We can whip anybody. Well, next week, half of you are going to be sad. <laughs> next week, we're going to find out who the real Christians are. Because of what I... I'm not sure about that. Don't get in a hurry. Because what I'd like to do next week is you wear your jersey, and I want to stand up here and see if everybody's praising the same. Because if the red and white are, and the orange and blue, whatever, sorry, right, blue and orange, orange and blue, if you're all down there like that, you're not building a gate. And if next week the orange and blue, look what the Lord has done. Come in here trying to praise, and they're just going, war ego, this son. All the Alabama fans blowed up and puffed up over there like this. It's going to happen to somebody. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. But either way, God's on the throne. <laughs> and I love football, but football's nothing to some of the things that happen in life. And do you understand anybody can praise him when everything's going well? Anybody can praise God when, when there's money in the bank and everybody's healthy and life's going good and you just got promoted and all those things we waved about a few minutes ago. But what happens in the day when I don't understand? When it's not what I wanted, when I don't like the moment, when I'm crying, when I'm hurting, when my heart is broken, when I have unanswered questions, what do I do then? Pearls develop out of irritation, gates that bring the presence of God are developed when I am facing that moment when my faith is challenged to the core. When I say here I'm a Christian, but on the inside, I'm battling for the very faith to believe in my God. What happens when I've suffered loss in my life? What do I do at the funeral? What do I do when I don't understand why? What do I do when I don't know how this happened? What do I do when I haven't done anything wrong and I'm hurting? What happens when a crisis occurs? How do I respond in a tragedy? What do I do when I'm still walking through the valley of the shadow of death? It's in those moments where we decide I'm going to hold on to my faith or the door is going to close on me. See, when I hold on to my faith and thank God in the midst of it, when I praise Him, no matter what the circumstance, listen, I'm opening a gate for the presence of God to begin to be exploded in my life. I want you to understand our words are either building gates that bring God's presence or building walls that block His anointing out of my life. My words are either building a gate to invite him in or building a wall that separates me from everything I need in my life. See, I'm, I've got to hurry. James 3, verse 9 through 11. Let's, 
we got to hit it quick. What does it say? It talks about our mouth. With, with the tongue we praise the Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Verse 10, we see this. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Verse 11 tells us this. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? We have to understand that the way I respond, what I say, what I do, when I'm hurting, when I don't understand, when it's not adding up, when it's not making sense, what do I say? What do I do? I am either building a gate or constructing a wall. I can't put both out of my mouth. You know, we want the sweet water. But how, how many of us understand that if I start putting the bitter water in the sweet, I've spoiled the sweet water. I may have a lot of sweet, but when I start putting bitter, it's no good anymore. See, we, we, we reference this. We understand. Uh, let me just quote it because I'm moving. Psalm 22, 3 says, God is enthroned on the praises of his people. He, he, is, he is empowered. He is authorized. He is recognized. He's enthroned on our praise. So who's enthroned on our complaining and criticizing? If I create the throne of God with my worship, whose throne comes in my life, my home, my church, my school, my neighborhood with complaining and criticizing? See, we, we, we have to understand. See, see we understand. We, we read here that I enter God's presence through giving thanks. I enter his presence with giving thanks. So whose presence do I enter in with complaining, murmuring, doubting, and grief? You see, guys, with great influence and authority demands great responsibility. We're the people of God. We, we serve the living God. We've been authorized to represent Christ in the kingdom on this earth. And have to understand, there are going to be moments when the hardest thing I'll ever do, uh, sometimes your greatest victory is just shut your mouth. Sometimes your greatest victory, just shut. I didn't say shut up. I wanted to, but I said shut your mouth. Just shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Sometimes you need to shut your mouth and walk. Shut your mouth and walk. Shut your mouth and wait till you can say something. I've determined that when my heart's bleeding and, and, and life is slapping me around, I don't want to say something that builds a wall between me and the presence of God. I need to say something that's going to build a gate where I can access in and encounter him. God has given us that. Guys, I, I can tell you more. We, we, you know, I, I remember uh, you know, I, my mother and father both in heaven. I, was, I, I remember... When they breathed their last breath, my father died first. My father was my best guy friend on the planet. Phyllis is my best friend. My dad's my best guy friend on the planet. He was the best man in my wedding all my life. Even when I'm young, he was my friend. He was my hero. He encouraged me. My mom and dad prayed for me. I was there when dad breathed his last breath. I was right there holding his hand in the hospital. Did it hurt? You better believe it hurt. Did it feel grief? Oh, I grieved. Was there a loss? Yes, there was a loss. But that's when you walk in that moment, and I've got to make a decision. I've got to make a decision. See, this is where I need to write a check on my faith account over here. Huh? I, 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 I've got to go draw something out of this faith account. Because right now I'm hurting. Right now I'm bleeding. Right now I, I, it, it hurts. And, and, and then you have questions, don't you? God, you got questions. God literally raised my father from the dead two times. Documented by the doctor. And you say, well, why didn't you do it this time? See, you, you'd think two would be enough for any of us, wouldn't it? Tell the truth. But how many of you ever had any family member? The doc, I, my dad went to his doctor in, in his 80s and said, I don't have the strength. That you, my energy's not there. And his doctor said, well, Mr. Sawyer, according to my records, you died and come back twice. I don't know what to give you. I don't know what to do for you. But we are never satisfied, are we? And when you have to say that goodbye, it's hard. Come listen to me. Did it hurt me? Oh, my God. It, it, it cut me to the quick. Did, did, did I like that? No. But I've got to make a decision. And the questions come. Did I pray enough? Did, did, should I have fasted more? 
did I pray the right kind of prayer? My, my mom passed away from cancer, and, and I, I pledged to mom, I'll pray for you every day. I'll pray for you every day, mom. I prayed for her every day. I prayed for her the day she died that God would heal her. And we prayed for other people, and God healed them of cancer. He didn't heal my mom that time. Questions. Why, God? Why, why, why my mother? We have people in this church. Stage four cancer, they're healed, delivered. We have a man we prayed for Wednesday night who had stage four cancer, and he texted me, and Pastor Millie on Pastor Tony, we prayed for him. He said, I just want you to know I'm out of the results. This thing's gone all the way down to T1, and they, they don't even know what to do with me right now. It's, you, but, 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 but you didn't heal my mom. What about, what about these questions? Did I do enough? It's decision time. Decision time. Am I going to let this destroy me? Am I going to let this rob my faith or break my relationship with God? Listen, let, let me help you with something right now. This is so powerful. you got to help. See, so what, do I, what am I going to do? So, God, I don't have an answer. Everybody in this room got some unanswered questions, if you'll be honest. Some have just stuffed them. You, you, you don't think about it. You don't deal with it. Some of you haunt you every day. What do you do with those unanswered questions? Well, this is what we do. We gather all those things together. And we put them in our arms. And we come before Almighty God. And we say, God, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't get this moment. But this is what I do know. You've never failed me or forsaken me. You've never walked away from me. You've never been unkind to me. You've never failed to be who you say you are. You've never failed to be the mighty God. And I'm still walking through the valley of this thing, and, and it hurts, and I'm bleeding. But, but watch this. I'm going to bring these with me today. I'm not going to hide them. I'm not going to run from them. I'm not going to deny them. I'm going to walk up to the throne of God, and I'm going to say, with these things, I'm going to praise you because you're God. I'm going to thank you because of who you are. I'm not in denial. I'm just saying I'm going to let my faith rise above what the moment is saying to me. And I'm going to thank you. And let me tell you about that moment in your life. Listen to this. It's the highest thanks you can ever give God. Listen to this. It is greater than any thanks that can be stated in heaven. Because in heaven there is no pain. And there is no disappointment. And there is no loss. And there is no unanswered question. And so the pearl of thanksgiving that you can create in your life by thanking Him when you're hurting is an offering to God that has no equal in heaven. There is a moment where we can carry what's hurting us and say, God, here it is. I thank you not for it, but in it. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what I know. There is an aroma that begins to rise in the nostrils of God that even heaven can't give him. But when we come with the pain of this life and thank him for who he is, there are gates that begin to open to you. There is access that comes before your life. There is something that transpires and only God can step into that moment. Can anybody thank him for that right now? Let's thank him. Psalm 24, verse 7 and 8. I want all my exalters and musicians and singers, whatever you call them nowadays, praise team, front team, words, everybody does their thing. Come on up here right now. Psalm 24, verse 7. Look at this. See, that gate not only allows me to come in, it allows God to come see me. Lift up your heads, you gates. Come on. Lift up your head, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that who? That the king of glory may come in. I need him in my house. I need him in my life. I need him in this church. We need him in this city. We need him in our schools. We need him in our neighborhoods. Lift up your heads, gates. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. That's our God. That's who he is. He comes through the gate. 
that started in irritation, in difficulty, when you didn't know what to do. I think the highest praise you'll ever give God is where you say, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to praise you. I don't have all the solutions, but I'm going to praise you. And in that irritation, in that difficulty, in that moment where we're fighting for every ounce of faith we have, the King of glory starts coming in your situation. The God of the universe comes walking in. He comes marching into this place. I want you to stand with me. That didn't say go. I said stand. I want you to stand with me right now. Oh, God, we need the gate of thanksgiving. Oh, God, you pay too high a price. Do you hear me? You see what I say now? You pay too high a price to let your emotions still this moment. You pay too high a price to let the devil still this moment. Oh, we hurt. <laughs> We've had some moments that don't add up. I've walked through some seasons and, and, and where, where I would change everything about it. But I've got to trust my God. And today... I guess there's too many of us to get right down here. You can come if you want to. You can. But let's turn this whole place into an altar. Side to side, front to back, this is an altar. We're on holy ground right now. I want you to grab all that stuff. I want you to grab all the unanswered questions and the things that have made you cry things that have attacked your faith I want you to gather it let's don't stuff it let's don't hide it come on get it we're going to give it to God today we're going to stand in the face of that and say God I thank you I know you're faithful God I know you're not through with me God I know the last chapter has not been written God I'm going to give you something heaven can't give you. Is that amazing? Heaven can't give him this gate. Because <laughs> they don't face what we face in heaven. But I'm going to give him something here. That's beyond anything heaven can offer him. This is your one eternal chance. Come on. It's your one chance in eternity. To give him praise angels cannot give.